good morning students welcome back let's continue our chapter last spring as i have told you in the previous video that this chapter is having two parts in the first part we will come across a boy named sahib and in the second part a boy named mukesh i have already started the chapter in which i have introduced to you anas chan the writer the author of this chapter as you can see the name of the chapter lost spring stories of student childhood which means the children who are deprived who are exploited and who don't know what childhood consists of also i have told you that how lucky you people are that you can enjoy the various aspects of every phase of your life and in this anas jam had tried to highlight to put light on this part of the society where poverty exists and in the name of traditions a lot of exploitations are done then we started the chapter where anas jam said that often she used to see in her neighborhood a boy who used to come looking out for gold my dear students here gold doesn't mean actually gold but it means something valuable and what could be something valuable for a rag picker a person who picks up waste it can be something which will give him money so always she used to see a boy who used to come looking out for such gold in the garbage dumps then about sahib further it has been told to us that he is actually from dhaka bangladesh and he is over here with his family in search of livelihood after his actual home had suffered a lot in the hands of storms when she inquired from him that why he picks up waste why he don't do anything else he said he don't know what else to do and then she asked a question why he never goes to school to that he answered whenever a school will be built in his neighborhood he will definitely go there the author jokingly said if she builds one whether he will come he said sure and after a few days he went running to her asking whether the school is ready she felt embarrassed because deep inside she knew that she had made a promise which is never meant to be fulfilled and this is how the life of these children are and after a few months of acquaintance after getting familiar with him she asked him what's your name and he said sahib e ala which was another thing to be thought of sahib e ala means lord of the universe but here the lord of the universe is speaking of the waste then an incident is given where she spoke to the boys of his group why they don't wear on chappals to which they gave different different answer someone said my mother is not ready to put it down from the shelf other one said that even if she does so he is not going to wear on the slippers he'll throw them off another one said he would wish to have one and the author says that whenever she went out traveling she found that in many of the places in the villages of the country she had seen children people walking barefoot and the excuse given is that it's a tradition but she thinks that it's just a lame excuse to cover the never ending poverty that exists in the country she also shared with us one incident one story being told to her by a person from mudip that how a priest son wished to goddess to have a pair of shoes and never to lose them and goddess heard the prayer the priest son the priest condition improved his son got the shoes but the children the rag pickers in her neighborhood have not yet received any such pairs of shoes 
Let's continue the story. My acquaintance with the barefoot rat because leads me to Simapuri, a place on the periphery of Delhi, yet miles away from it metaphorically. Those who live here are squatters who came from Bangladesh back in 1971. Sahib's family is among them. Simapuri was then a wilderness. It still is, but it is no longer empty. In structures of mud with roofs of tin and tarpaulin, devoid of sewage, drainage or running water, live 10,000 rat pickers. They have lived here for more than 30 years without an identity, without permits, but with ration cards that get their names on voters list and enable them to buy grain. Food is more important for survival than an identity. If at the end of the day we can feed our families and go to bed without an aching stomach, we would rather live here than in the fields that gave us no grain, say a group of women in tattered saris. When I asked them why they left their beautiful land of green fields and rivers, wherever they find food, they pitch their tents that become transist homes. Children grow up in them, becoming partners in survival. And survival in Simapuri? means rat picking. Through the years, it has acquired the proportions of a fine art. Garbage to them is gold. It is their daily bread, a roof over their heads, even if it is a leaking roof. But for children, it is even more. Okay, let's see what light has been thrown on the living condition of these rat pickers. Now the writer says that the rat pickers whom she got acquainted with, means Sahib and his party, they took her to one place called as Simapuri. Now this Simapuri is on the periphery of Delhi, yet miles away from it, metaphor. Means Simapuri is a very, is a part, integral part of Delhi. But when it comes to physical existence, development and all the other aspects, it is totally far away from Delhi. And in this place, there lived squatters. Squatters means the illegal immigrants who came from Bangladesh and had been living there since 1971. Sahib's family, one among them. Actually, Simapuri is a wilderness, means it's a place where actually the land is not used for any purpose like agricultural or commercial, any of the part. But you cannot say that it's totally empty because a large area of Simapuri is been occupied by these squatters. Mud houses are there, the roofs of which are covered with tin and tapu. You might have seen no, the uh, slum areas and all how they made their houses. Their houses are covered with either the sheets which are used for banners or otherwise tins or otherwise tarpaulin. The sheet uh, we people in Hindi call tirpal. And these houses, they are devoid of sewage, means no proper sanitation, no drainage system. And running water is not there. Everything means they are living in with a zero amenity, you can say and around some 10,000 rat pickers. My dear students, this is, this can be, this statistic, this data might vary because this is the story which had been written a long time back. This is an incident a long time back. Right now, what is the situation? We people don't know about it. They have lived here for 30 years, it is said, and without any identity. No permits, but they have ration cards. It's really, a thing to think of. They don't have any permission of living but they have ration cards. And through these ration cards they can get food. And you know why these ration cards are given to them? So that the great people can get their votes. It's all selfish needs that leads to their existence in ration cards. But then 
when the author asked about this living condition see the answers been given by them they said food is more important than identity it's true and it has also been said that if you can go to bed with a stomach full without a starving stomach it is more important than going to the fields that give no grain but to live in a circumstance where you don't have any identity this is what a group of ladies said to her who were wearing tattered sarees means all torn in a terrible state when they were inquired by the author why they left their beautiful green fields of dhaka to live in such circumstances they said food is more important at least we are able to live and from that time onwards whenever and wherever they get food they just pitch their tents and the tents became their transit homes movable homes wherever wherever they get uh, the fact that they come across that there the resources are more more availability of food more chances there they used to go and live children they started growing up in such circumstances and they become became the partners of their uh, survival this kind of survival and survival in seema puri only one profession that is a rag picker it is also been said that a kind of a fine art it turned into means picking up the rags and garbage it became what it became gold for them actually it is their daily bread a roof over their head even though if it is a leaking one here leaking one means no proper amenities no sewage no drainage no running water uh, and no permission nothing but still at least they are able to live and for child it is more than let's see what is it i sometimes find a rupee even a 10 rupee note sahib says his eyes light up when you can find a silver coin in a heap of garbage you don't stop scorching for there is hope of finding more it seems that for children garbage has a meaning different from that what it means to their parents for the children it is wrapped in wonder for the elders it is a means of survival okay we are talking about the rat pickers and we said that the garbage for them is the means of livelihood but see the two different aspects of it children how they look at it and parents how they look at it sahib the narrator says that sometimes he says that instead of a rupee he gets a 10 rupee note and his eyes shine like anything when he shared the secret obviously when you are searching in a heap i'm not talking about a garbage heap though it is written like that i'm talking about any heap when you are searching and you get something very valuable in it obviously you get a high hopes and you don't stop scorching searching inside it with an intention of getting more of that kind and for children that was the same thing they always used to wait eagerly that what other surprise is waiting for them inside that heap of garbage maybe they will get something very surprising but for parents it was different for parents it was only the sole mean of survival their daily bread one winter morning i see sahib standing by the fenced gate of the neighborhood club watching two young men dressed in white playing tennis i like the game he hums content to watch it standing behind the friends i go inside when no one is around he admits the gatekeeper lets me use the swing sahib to is wearing tennis shoes that looks strange over his discolored shirt and shorts someone gave them to me he says in a manner of explanation the fact that they are discarded shoes of some rich boy who perhaps refused to wear them because of a hole in one of them does not bother him for one who has walked barefoot even shoes with a hole is a dream come true but the game he is watching so intently is out of his reach 
This is another part. One morning, winter morning, Arthur saw Sahib standing near the neighborhood club. And he was standing outside, other side of the fence. And he was watching two young men dressed in white. You might have seen those who play lawn tennis and tennis and all those things. Uh, when they go for practice in the club and all, they put on white uh, dress and go. And he, they were wearing the white dress and they were playing tennis. At that time, Sahib, he said to Arthur, Oh, I love this game. I like it. And he also shared one more thing. That is, whenever there is no one around, he goes inside. The gatekeeper seems to be very generous with him to let him use the swing inside the club. Sahib was also wearing tennis shoes, which was a total mismatch to his totally discolored shirt and shorts. And as a part of an explanation, he said that someone had given him that shoes. The shoe is having a hole in itself. Uh, maybe some rich boy who don't want a shoe with a hole gave it off to Sahib for whom a pair of shoes means a big dream come true. But one thing is fact that though he got the shoes but it's not easy for him to go or it's impossible for him to go there inside to play that game of tennis which he likes a lot. This morning, Sahib is on his way to the milk booth. In his hand is a steel canister. I now work in a tea stall down the road, he says, pointing in the distance. I am paid 800 rupees and all my meals. Does he like the job? I ask. His face, I see, has lost the carefree look. The steel canister seems heavier than the plastic bag. He would carry so lightly over his shoulder. The bag was his. The canister belongs to the man who owns the tea shop. Saheb is no longer his own master. While we come to the concluding part of this first part of the chapter, it is shown that one morning our author happens to meet Saheb who was moving towards the milk booth to collect milk. He was carrying a steel canister in his hand. And when asked, he informed the author that he started working in a tea stall in the road, somewhere at a down part. He just pointed towards that area where he, was, he had been working in the tea stall for the past maybe a few days. And he also informed the author that he is paid 800 rupees for the same and all his meals. So the author thought in her soul. Whether he is happy, but she also found that his face seems to have lost the carefree look when he used to come out of his house in the morning with a group of boys looking out for the rats like three birds. Now his plastic bag has been replaced by the canister which is heavier than the plastic bag and the bag was his. But the canister belonged to the shopkeeper. Somewhere, Sahib is no longer a master of his school. My dear students, this is what happens with this category. 